Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Ashley Hicks. What's up, Ashley? Hey, what's up? And Kyle Schramm, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Awesome. And there's no Joe Courtney today. Oh, uh, man. So he's not here. I'm not going to try and steal any or all of his updates, but he is finally making the trek across the globe. Uh, so he will have landed at some point. You guys will hear from him again one day. Well, we don't TBD. It's all TBD. Much of Joe TBD at the moment. Uh, so Kyle, let's go with you for updates, man. How's life? Life is grand. I actually have an update this time. So no giving me crap for not having an update. You might not like the update though. Yeah. Um, so I got a new toy for the gym. It is a deadlift jack. Not any deadlift jack. Not just any deadlift jack. It's like a two-sided deadlift jack that you stand up and use, not like a DIY one where you have to bend down and use it. It's like a <laughs> yeah. power lifting one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm actually excited. No, it's cool. You got to – if people haven't seen this type of deadlift jack, it's very serious. Like it, it could probably mm. – you could probably use it on your car if you could manage to find a barbell-sized <laughs> piece of – metal on your car you could probably jack up your car but it's uh it's pretty crazy actually it doesn't take up a lot of space (laughs) i wasn't going down that road i wasn't even going to say anything well i was just some people may think that but yeah anyway i i didn't post a picture of it or anything but yeah it's kind of cool but now i don't have to bend over and change plates on my bar i'm just I'm really Pick glad you saved yourself from that additional work. <laughs> hey, I, actually, it wears on you. Actually, Hannah is a lot more excited about it than I am. So making the wife happy, I'm good. And I'm in the Hannah boat. Like That's the worst part about heavy one rep max deadlifts. I hate having to like lift up the side. And then if it gets super heavy, it, like I don't know. Sometimes you have to really work for it. I'll probably only use it during fit week. Because it's like during regular training, it's if we're doing deadlifts, it's typically you have one weight and you just do that one weight for the whole workout. But like during fit week, you know, you're doing max efforts and changing the weights and all that stuff. So got to conserve that energy. Yeah. But yeah. it was a, it was it was cheap <laughs> and it was on Facebook Market and it just happened to be there and I was like, yeah, okay. Jared, your sarcasm is oozing. <laughs> I just like to give Kyle a hard time because. Kyle, was it you who asked about the pad on the bar? No, it was not me who asked about the pad on the bar. <laughs> it, that was not me. Oh, no one's going to claim it. Okay. Um, nope. Well, there is one person missing. I just, I don't feel like it was Joe. I feel like someone on the team, Marco would ask about putting spikes on the bar to make it more uncomfortable. So I know mm. it's not Marco. So I'm just not thinking it's VD. Ashley never tells a lie. So it's between Kyle and Joe. (laughs) I may have said something about a friend of mine having a pad for his bar and using it, but I did not use it. When I was working out at my friend's gym, um, he had a a bar pad and I was just like, what? Is this a good idea? Yeah. No, I never tried it. Not, did not go down that road. (laughs) I love it. I love messing with you too. All right, cool. Um, Ashley, how's life? Life is good. Um, my little one is getting older. He'll be two at the end of this month. So he's going to preschool, which is kind of cool. So he'll be there for two days a week, just in the mornings. So it's at this 
church that we really like that's down the street from our house. And um, we did an orientation today. And so I'm super excited about that. But and then I've got more doctor's appointments to answer more questions. So I feel like it's just never ending. But it's um, I'm glad that we're trying to get to the root of things. So, um, yeah. And super sore from yesterday's workout of anyone who was on Harder to Kill. Sweet Moses, the lunges with the back squats and the 75 push-ups, Jared, you just killed me yesterday. It's good, though. It's good for you. What about you? What's your update, sir? Uh, you know, I have a lot of uh, end of three fitness updates I want to get to. And then just one personal update uh, just for everybody. So at the time of publishing this, it is officially deload week. Uh, so that means we have deload week. That's right, right? Sometimes we get the calendar gets all jacked up in my brain when we, we're trying to record ahead. But yeah, deload week uh, is right now for the rest of the week. And then after deload week, we will have the new fit week. So it will, I would say about half the tests have changed. So you get to experience that. You'll get to experience the new fit week, the new standards. Uh, so if you are listening to this, you're not one of our athletes, great time to come on board, try out the new new tests that we have uh, put together and that everyone will be running through in the new fit week. We really beefed up fit week as well with more educational materials, like actually packed into the programming. So you can see some of that stuff. Uh, so deload week. Now the next week is fit week. A couple other things, the new cycle, you, everyone put it on their calendar. Officially day one is going to be 28 September will be day one of the new cycle. The cycle will carry us through uh, the end of 2020 and hopefully into a much better 2021 with less pandemic and lots of other things. Uh, and the big announcement, new cycle webinar is 17 September. So that is a Thursday. Uh, I'll be sending out invites and in five line Friday. Uh, but we do these new cycle webinars. It's really fun for all the athletes to get together because it's live. Uh, I talk a little bit about the new cycle. I'll be talking a lot about the new standards. And this is also when we typically release sample programming. So you have access to that. And then the last kind of announcement is with the new cycle, 28 September, we'll be kicking off um, our second and last iteration of the fuels course for 2020. We only do this two to three times per year. This year, we are only doing it twice. So this is the second time. And so if you're interested in the fuels course, uh, you can sign up for our newsletter. That's, that's where we get push out most of the information. I'll be putting information in the uh, Facebook groups the Garage Gym Athlete Facebook groups as well for you can sign up for a pre-release because we only take on so many people because it is a coaching program that we run you through, but learning a lot about bioenergetics and that sounds cool, but it's really just how your body utilizes different fuel sources for activity. So it's a really great course. Uh, we've just had a lot of feedback. There are live coaching calls involved with that one, uh, group coaching calls. So you get access to me and the team and a lot of other good stuff in the fuels course. So if you're the least bit interested, sign up for that pre-release announcement because we don't normally push it beyond that because the spots are limited. So it only goes out to those who are on the pre-release list. So do sign up if you see that in Five Line Friday or in the Facebook groups. Uh, now, personally, I just want to say running is the worst. That's it. Uh, I'm, in, I, I'm in Kyle's camp. So I have not been running. I mean, hardly at all. I've kind of mentioned this on the podcast. Like I do, I've just been cycling. Everything's been cycling. I either actually ride my bike or I use the bike erg anytime there's conditioning elements. Uh, but I wanted to, I knew that was going to not be an okay long-term solution, like not running. And so I wanted to test out a five mile run and it was really, really bad. Uh, the, just my time wasn't great. And a big part of it comes down to, you know, we talked about this for Spartan races and stuff like my hip flexors are just so ill prepared to handle running right now. I could feel them at the three mile mark. Um, and when I mentioned it in Spartan races, it's like, yeah, your hip flexors are going to fail, but I'm talking like once you get to like 15 miles, if you're not a runner, but mine are already feeling like crap at around mile four and five. So long story short, I'm going to start running more just where I don't lose that, that skill set And, uh, that's it right but it it's there's no translation between anything and fitness which is awful i mean maybe my lungs and my heart would hurt if i just never ran or if i didn't if i wasn't cycling 
but you can't like get off a bike and then be a good runner. You can't be a runner and then get on a bike and you just, if you want to be good at something, you have to do that thing. That's a lesson I've been learning over and over again for like a decade and a half. So that's running. That's it. (laughs) All right. You guys ready to talk science? Let's do it. So this is a great, 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 great study. I'm so happy that it was released. That's not sarcastic. Um, It came out July 29th, 2020, or technically August 2020. Um, So very, very new, very new study. And it's called Co-Consumption of Vegetables and Fruit, Whole Grains and Fiber Reduces the Cancer Risk of Red and Processed Meat in a Large Prospective Cohort of Adults from Alberta's Tomorrow Project. So this is an awesome study. The, I'm going to give you the basic premise of the study. Uh, they looked into a cohort of 26,218 adults aged 35 to 69, um, and they really just gave them a questionnaire. Um, it's a 124-item past, past year food frequency questionnaire, um, and there was an average... 13.5 year follow-up with 15 different types of cancer. Uh, and th- so they're really just trying to look at, uh, you know, correlative data of what they ate, didn't eat and the association between the things that they did eat and their prevalence of cancer. The reason I love this study is because it just puts things into a little bit better perspective for not, not looking, not demonizing any one thing, not saying, the vegetable is the only thing that you should ever eat or you should never, ever eat meat. They came to some pretty good conclusions um, with a relatively large study on your chance of getting cancer for based on your, on your diet. Um, so I have a lot of takeaways and things that I want to mention, but you know, I don't want to steal any thunder from, from you two, so to speak. So I'll just mark things off if they get uh, hit on, but uh, I'll start with you, Ashley. I'd love to know what your, your take was on this stuff. So for the thing I took away from the study, first of all, the participants, what I want to talk about is that over half the people, 65.7% were either overweight and obese going into the study. Um, Also that they had 55.1% were either current or former smokers. So these people aren't like they're all, they're not already like the healthiest of people that they are, you know, they're participating in this study. Um, but overall with the results and the findings, what it shows is that if you have a well balanced diet, so talking about foods that are again, nutrient dense, high in fiber, not super starchy. So fruits and vegetables, it shows that you can still have red meat and it's going to be okay. Um, It's not that red meat is the core reason for for linking to cancer. Um, Now, processed food, processed meat, we've talked about this in many, many podcasts, um, is not good for you. And And this study showed that, that this processed meat was not good. So, my takeaway for whole of this is if you do eat red meat, you know, maybe don't eat We eat a lot of lean proteins, fish. Um, We maybe consume red meat once, maybe twice a week. Um, But we also make sure that the meat is good quality, like sourced. So it's going to be grass-fed. It's going to be organic. Um, And the same thing, like if you're eating bacon or anything like that, we do uncured, nitrate-free. You know, we try to make sure that our food, we know where it comes from and um, that it's good source of food. So that is my main takeaway for this is that it's not meat that's killing you. It's not meat that is linking to cancer. It's probably the quality of food um, that is, you know, can be detrimental. She said it. Red meat's not bad. Kyle, what do you think? (laughs) Uh, I agree with that. Totally. I didn't need a scientific study to tell me that. No, I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) What I, what I got from this was eat your veggies. You know, if you want to eat red meat, eat 
eat fruits and vegetables with it. Um, what I, what I really liked about how the study is written, how they wrote it up, they, they put this in there. It says nutritional epidemiology has traditionally focused on isolating the effect of a single food or nutrient on cancer risk. Yet dietary factors are usually interrelated. And so that's kind of what we've been talking about a lot when we talk about nutrition is a lot of the science that's come out and kind of demonized red meat um, as a carcinogen and causing cancer and things like that. It's like those people likely wanted to prove that red meat was bad for you. And so they found a way to do so. Um, or other, you know, other studies focusing on one particular food item or one particular food group, you know, they want to prove something about this one particular food group when in reality, the vast majority of people don't eat just one food group. You know, it's like you're not eating just one thing. And so that's what this study was about. It was like, let's talk about the co-consumption of everything. Like, can we can we examine the cancer risk among people who eat red meat, but also eat fruits and vegetables or eat processed meat? and also eat fruits and vegetables on different scales, you know, and it turns out that people who ate less fruits and vegetables with their red meat had higher rates of cancer or people who ate less vegetables with, with their processed meat had higher rates of cancer. But it seems that keeping everything balanced, keeping the meat and the fruits and vegetables and the whole grains, keeping all of that balanced properly, actually kind of mitigates the carcinogenic effects of the red meat to where your cancer, your likelihood of cancer actually goes down. Um, and so you get to have the nutrient dense red meat and all of the good things that come along with that. And also the fruits and vegetables are giving you their own nutrients, but kind of mitigating the effects of the red meat. So uh, that's what I enjoyed about it. And I was, I'm glad to finally see something like that where it says, Hey, you need to balance it instead of just finding one quote unquote bad guy. There's not one quote unquote bad guy out there. There's you put it all together and have a balanced diet and everything works itself out. I think too, the, they mentioned fiber, like the high fiber diet. And I was actually super excited that they mentioned that too, because fiber does many good things for your body, regulates some things as well. But um, that also is in, again, fruits and veggies, like the fiber, the antioxidants and the um, calcium, other things that they mentioned in the study. So, um, because it, when I look at someone's diet too, I can always tell when they're like, oh yeah, I've been eating my fruits. I've been eating my vegetables. And if they put in, so in women's health track, we have the females take a screenshot of their daily macros kind of thing, but we can also see their daily fiber. And some people, even though they might be meeting their mic macros, they're only eating like less than 10 grams of fiber a day. And, you know, you should be getting something closer to like 20, you know, maybe 25 um, grams of fiber a day at least. So that was another thing that I really liked. Yeah, I think fiber is really important. And I think it's interesting, just, just this correlation between uh, you know, we just talked about this in the last podcast about clean eating and how each um, each style of diet or whatever you want to call it, they have to demonize something, right? Uh, but when you're looking at the big picture, as Kyle was pointing out, that there's a lot more a lot more to unpack. So here are just some of my takeaways from the study, and some of them are similar to what what Ashley and Kyle said. So I will just hit on some of them. Again, processed meat is like a no-go. So there was a st statistical significance in an increase in cancer from consuming processed meat. So there's not a lot of argument in the consumption of processed meat really anymore. So if you're consuming a lot of processed meat, which is, uh, you know, certain types of, of bacon dependent on how Ashley said, like where, how you're getting it and all that stuff and canned meats and sausage and um, I mean, I, to be, I'm, most of those meats that gross me out anyway, processed meats are, are pretty gross. So they're, anyway, they're, apparently they'll, they'll give you cancer. Red meat, it was not as clear. There was not a statistical significance, uh, but there was a slight increase, not to a statistical level, but the consumption of red meat alone with a lower uh, consumption of fruits and vegetables, there was an increase in cancer. So I'm not going to pretend like there was nothing seen 
negatively with red meat. So apparently if you're just eating a bunch of red meat, uh, independent of, of uh, processed meat, there is an increase in cancer risk um, if you're not eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. But on the higher end of that, the people who ate the most red meat but were also had high uh, levels of consumption of vegetables were at lower risk than those who had low amounts of red meat and low vegetable, if that makes sense. So you, the people who are eating the most red meat, so long as they are doing that with uh, veg, fruits and vegetables, they not, it's, it's better. It's a lower risk, an actual lower risk of, of getting cancer. So that's just something that you need to keep in mind. I think every time I eat meat is in conjunction with some sort of fruit or vegetable, primarily vegetable, uh, I'm not like a steak and strawberries type of guy, but the, the vegetable side of that is, is really good. Um, so that's, that's something I wanted to point out from the study directly. Um, now how many vegetables should you eat? They actually did, uh, put that in the study as well. So low, a low consumer of vegetables, fruits and vegetables will be less than four servings a day. Uh, moderate would be four to six servings a day and high would be more than six servings per day. Um, and I think that that's about all I had with, they do, they break it down to 15 different types of cancer. So if you wanted to look at the data, definitely go pull this study. If you want to see how each one uh, was associated. Uh, but now the, one of my, the things just open for discussion also kind of mentioned last week is if, if there's even the slightest bit of risk for something um, let's put in perspective because I'll take more risk for myself than I would someone else. And so I'll use my children as, a, as an example. So am I comfortable feeding my children red meat? If there is a, some, if I'm not, if they're not eating their vegetables, there is an increase in, in cancer, you know, and that, I think that becomes a, a good question. And so should we all, if we just want to avoid all risk, should we all just be vegan? And that is where the argument can go. Cause it's not like, like, hey, okay, you have to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables with your red meat to have almost zero risk or, or even lower risk of, of getting cancer, but why not just cut it all together and be vegan? My answer to that is very similar to why I prefer to lift with a barbell. So there is a lot of risk, me going to my garage by myself and doing heavy back squats. I could, I could fail on a back squat. It, there's a lot more stability involved. Like while it feels relatively safe, it's nowhere safe as getting a machine like a belt squat machine or a leg extension machine and using that that's way safer than a barbell back squat but the potential upside in barbell training is way greater and more effective and that's how i feel about the consumption of meat so if i go have you know whatever uh, ground beef or something like that i'm getting a lot of awesome stuff you know, creatine, amino acids, high dose of protein and a very lean and, and, and good source um, and fairly easy. It's easy. It's quick. It, it tastes good to me. Um, so there's a lot of upside to that. You, I can get this higher amount of protein. That's the only reason I'm not a fan of veganism is how hard it is to get that protein and how hard it is to get all these other uh, nutrients that you need uh, without having to supplement. So that's, that's generally why I'm still okay with it. Now, if I know, okay, any time it's like a, it's like a rule. If this, then that, if I'm going to have red meat, I have to have, you know, fruits and vegetables to this amount with it to make sure I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. That's like a BPA. Like people used to freak out about BPA and BPA is a bad thing, but they found out if you have enough vitamin B in your diet, BPA is completely neutralized. So if you did, you are at risk from the, you know, BPA chemicals in your body and you take a B, B supplement, then your body's going to handle it. Not, not something you always want to do, but there's a solution to it. Right. So that, that's kind of how I look at these things is, um, how much do you want to consume it and what do you need to do to be able to lower your cancer risk? Cause I think that's a big deal. You know, we all want to live longer. It's not always just about performance. Um, but actually I think I saw in your notes, like, and, and, cause I'm similar. I don't even actually consume red meat that much. <laughs> like I, most of the time, like I actually enjoy chicken, um, more than I do most, uh, most beef most of the time. Um, how do how are you guys on that? You could you guys consume primarily cause we're all meat eaters. Like none of us are vegan. And, and so do, how do you guys consume? What types of meat do you consume most, uh, regularly? I would say chicken is, is the most that I would do. Um, some Turkey, um, but, and then some red meat, either, either steak or ground beef. 
Um, but yeah, most, most of the meat that we eat, it's chicken. That's, that's our primary. Um, I would second chicken here, but I think chicken and fish would be tied for us. We eat a lot of fish here. Um, especially with what I just went through. Um, I noticed that I needed to up my fish consumption for omegas and, um, but yeah, so we do chicken fish and then we do some ground Turkey as well. Yeah. And I love my dad's take on this because he, I'd say over the last three or four months, he's been on a huge uh, health kick and, and it's, it's been great. He's lost a ton of weight. Um, even thinking about interviewing him on the podcast again to, to talk about that. Cause he's lost a, it's a lot of weight. Um, but I was talking to him, he was asking me about red meat cause he's kind of concerned about it. And, uh, he was just like, okay, well I just won't eat that much red meat. Cause it sounds like we don't really know. And, uh, so he just eats a lot of like salmon and, and, um, chicken and all sorts of stuff. And occasionally, uh, like a burger or something like that very occasionally, just because he's like, ah, we're not really sure. And he doesn't dive into the science or think about this stuff that much or whatever. But I just think that's like a really safe way to go. You're just like, I'm not really sure. So maybe I, I won't consume it as much yet. It won't be the most prevalent thing in my diet. Uh, so I think that's a pretty safe approach when you're talking about fruits and vegetables. You guys have anything else on this? No. Cool. Eat your red meat. Make sure you have some fruits and vegetables in there as well. And I'm going to try your steak and strawberries. I do. It doesn't sound bad. I mean, I really like strawberries and I like steak. <laughs> so anyway, we, this is the first time this has ever happened in a podcast. So we have a podcast crash. The podcast is officially being crashed. What's up? Joe? Sure. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so what happened when you just have open zoom links flying around the internet? Uh, so is welcome, that- man. This is true nomad status and style to where I just crashed in the middle while doing a podcast while in an airport. He is in an airport right now. If that doesn't uh, scream commitment, I don't know what does. So I think we just, we're primarily looking for your updates. I, I have so many, but I feel like I need to save some for next week just because I don't need to take too long on this. But the most fun one, I think, is related to your, uh, your wasp story to where oh. you were fighting your wasp. Oh, yeah. Let's, I have uh, a similar one. <laughs> we were doing a a run and it was just like on the indoor sometimes every four to five minutes, you know, you go for a run, but every 45 minutes you drop down to pushups and, uh, uh, what are those called? Mountain climbers. That's what they are. Well, one of the first times that I did that, I put my hands down and I was starting to do my pushups. And I noticed there's a bunch of red ants around my hand. I was like, Oh my goodness. I don't, you know, I don't know what kind of ants you got to have in Texas. Cause we were in Texas. They're uh, serious. Yeah. Yeah. So as I was doing my push downs, I was like, well, I don't want to move for my uh, mountain climbers. So I would pick up a finger and I would squish an ant as they would come closer to me. And then another one would come and I would squish another one. So I was like playing a little game of whack-a-mole with ants, killing the ants with my hand as I was doing my mountain climbers. And then I ran again. Didn't even think about the mountain climbers, right? No, I didn't. I was just yeah. like, man, I could do so many, many more of these. I was killing so many ants. Release the murder hornets, man. <laughs> yeah. It's- it's an effective strategy. We will learn how to bottle this up. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to be distracted from push-ups and mountain climbers, just put your hand in some ants. It's got to be insects though. Cause if we were to like release the grizzly bear, it just doesn't work as much. <laughs> you die. <laughs> yeah. You die or you, or you run released. fast enough. Uh, but little small insects trying to like just sting you pretty solid. Yeah. So, I think I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, there was a, another one was actually really quick because it was, it was at the end of this, uh, this, by the way, some parks in uh, Texas are really, really awesome. So there was, I posted a picture of it. They're really cool. But Liz and I were doing a workout and one of the things that we were doing, we did a whole bunch of lunges and then we would get after lunges, turn around and sprint back and then rest. There was a trainer there that was about to like have a client come and he was fishing. He was just like, as he was fishing, he was staring at us and he came up and talked to us later and was, uh, he just like complimented and, and, and whatnot. And then he mentioned that, uh, what we were doing, he's going to make his boxer do in a little bit. And I was like, Oh, well glad for the inspiration. Cause it did suck. Awesome. So yeah. We're Raj just and athlete ripples. Exactly. Cool, man. Well, we're did you tell him your fire ant story. No, no. I just showed him my, my palm, all my ants. See what I'll, see what I did today. You should have your boxer do this. Yeah. Go, go play in some fire ants. <laughs> I'm, I'm now like trying to replay in my head all the times I've like encountered an animal or insects in fitness. 
Um, and none of them are that good. I've swallowed bugs while running. That, oh. That, oh didn't make, that, that slows you down. That doesn't, that never speeds you up. And, uh, <laughs> I've had a snake literally, um, try and bite me like it, there you, whatever lunged. What, what is that called when a snake yeah. does that? Yeah. Lunge, so let's go with that. Yeah. Lunge at me. Attacked uh, maybe. Yeah. And, uh, like got relatively close. Like I was on the side of the road and I was like, that is the most aggressive snake I've ever seen. He missed. I've seen a bobcat stare me face to face. I think I've, I've told that one on the podcast and you're just like, there's a moment of like, what's about to happen? It's me versus <laughs> you. Like, are we going to do this? And, uh, he thought better of it. Smart, smart animal. Um, but I just, I'm, small insects are the only thing that ever, uh, have taken my mind off things while making it, making it better performance, better. I had a Backward. moth fly in my ear once. I was coming in from running outside. It was early in the morning. I had my porch light on and there were moths flying all around it. And as I stopped to open the door to go inside, it flew straight in my ear. And yeah, I felt violated for the rest of the day. Like that, that was a feeling that I cannot explain to you. That was just really, really weird. Mm. I have had, I don't, I don't oh. run in the dark anymore and it's not because of, it's not because of Dateline. It's because of moths. <laughs> oh Dateline. Gosh. I've had no incidences at all. I think wow. maybe. In a Ashley's not trying hard enough. Okay. Calm your matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Maryland, a couple of weeks ago, apparently I got stung by a sweat bee. I didn't know that was a thing. I was running with my shirt off because, you know, they're just running. And I just felt a, a prick and a sting. And then Liz was there and she was like, oh, yeah, how's a bee? I was like, oh, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Sweat I mean, I've definitely been stung. I've been stung during Murph before. Uh, no, it didn't help anything. Just hurt. Okay. We are about to get into recipes. And <laughs> um, so let's do that. It kind of, it's a, it's a nice segue into how to not get cancer by eating uh, fruits and vegetables with your red meat. If you're going to consume red meat and do not, per, don't ever eat processed meat study that we just went over. So we're going to get into it. I'm going to go first. Because everyone knows, you've heard some iteration of it. I've been doing this shake for years. Uh, but the interesting story, and I won't get too graphic in the details because it's unimportant. But let's just say I had my little, my little limbo time period. Nothing to be compared to Joe's limbo time period of six months or whatever. But I had mine that was like five or six weeks in between houses. And my diet was just off. It wasn't my normal diet. It wasn't that bad, but it just wasn't my normal diet. But one thing I didn't consume one single time during that time period was my shake, which is almost an everyday thing for me just because I didn't have access to a blender or the right ingredients or whatever. And my digestion got pretty screwed up. Like I said, I won't get into uh, a lot of details there, but I can almost 100% attribute it to my shake because all my digestion returned within a couple of days of getting back on, on the routine, if you will. So you, you guys can just infer what you may. Um, but fiber. yeah, this is like the, a fiber bomb is what this, <laughs> this shake is. Um, so it's one cup of spinach, which is a lot. I used to do a little bit less. Uh, sometimes I do kale in there, uh, instead of spinach. So it's either one cup of spinach or kale, one cup of frozen blueberries, one tablespoon of chia seeds, generally a scoop of protein, whichever protein I'm using at the time. Um, then I'll add a fat, which is going to be either almond butter, like two tablespoons of almond butter or MCT oil. Uh, and if I need some more sugar, like if it's post-workout, then I will go half a banana to full banana, depending on the, on the workout or training session. But that is it. It's evolved over the years, and that's where it's kind of landed – um, I used to put a lot more in there. I remember the first time I ever gave it to Joe, he, he his exact words were, wow, you got a lot going on in there. And uh, I think that was like a backhanded compliment of like, what the hell are you doing? You've put way too many things in here. Um, that was like five years ago. But uh, yeah, that's the shake. And I consume it almost every day. And I think it, it helps me. Liquid? What What do you use? Water? Oh, yeah. Typically water. water. Okay. I'll, I'll throw water in there and uh, sometimes a little bit of ice, but yeah, I used to do almond milk, but I can't, I can't tell the difference that much. So 
stop wasting the almond milk. Just go Berkey water. filtered water. Berkey filtered water. That's true. That's all my water. That's my only recipe I'm sharing because that's all I know how to do. <laughs> so I typically am not one to follow recipes. Growing up in the kitchen and having a dad for a chef, humble brag, <clears throat> uh, you don't really ever use recipes. I just kind of put things together. Uh, sometimes I do look up recipes a lot, but usually I'll look up like two to three and then like I'll get the general idea of what I want to cook. And I'm like, all right, cool. I got it in my head, whatever, let's go. But also don't do any baking. That's why I just don't have the patience or care for, for baking. Baking is hard. Yeah. It takes actual measuring and recipes and I'm not, I'm not about that life, <laughs> but yeah, you can't eyeball a baking recipe. You'll screw it up. Yeah, pretty much. Um, there are two recipes that I do use still now, and one of them I can blame for Jared, and that is the paleo waffle recipe mm. that I believe was in Daniel Walker's book, something like that. Oh, yeah, I, I use that all the time, but I've also kind of adopted it to my own. I add uh, more protein, or I just add, I add actual protein, which means I have to add more liquid and stuff. But the main recipe that I wanted to bring to light that Liz and I use all the time when we actually have a home to cook and it's it's great for uh you know the whole cook once eat for a week or whatever because it's it's an easy kind of to go breakfast or snack and that are is uh there's a paleo cookbook called well fed there's a couple of them and their salmon patties are phenomenal you usually uh, yields about 16 to 18 of those whenever you make a batch or two batches because i double mine emily made those Fantastic. like last week and i i ate an unbelievable amount of them <laughs> She said I, you ate 80% of the meal. Is what yeah, she said. I had just transitioned to, um, we talked about this, right? This several weeks ago, I transitioned to just being really strict on the diet. And what that generally means for me is I'm going to be really hungry because I'm just not going to eat. So like, there's no snacking or anything. It's just like, I might eat like two meals a day. And so that day, it was like the second or third day of being strict. And she cooked those things. And I was just like, that just, she cooked so many. And I was like, oh, well, it's, she does that because it's like her lunch throughout the week. And I just ruined that whole plan and just <laughs> ate like all of them. Molish it. Yeah. It usually good. one can of salmon yields about eight or nine, depending on how many uh, patties. So I usually do two at a time because then we bag them up into fours and then you throw them in the freezer and then you can just break them out and they last forever. They last for a long time once you actually make them. So it takes an hour to make and you'll get 16 or so of them. And then Liz will even pull one out the night before. And then put it in the fridge, and then the next morning she goes to work, and it's thawed out and good to go. So that is fantastic. Obviously, sure. Jared agrees. They're delightful. Yeah, Emily and I ha just happened to make them literally the same day, so we were texting back and forth. So she told me about your your very ravenous salmon patty eating, Jared. All in, all in on the salmon patties. Um. So. Another one that I'll add is by the Defying Dish. She just actually came out with a new cookbook you can get on Amazon. Um, I really love her stuff because it's um, Whole30 AIP, so autoimmune protocol. Um, lots of great recipes, but my favorite is called the Hibachi Style Chicken with Magic Mustard Sauce. Jared, you've had this one. Um, but it's got chicken and chicken thighs, zucchini, onions, mushrooms, um, carrots. So it's packed full of veggies. And then the magic mustard sauce, it is to die for. It's like it's Dijon mustard and you've got ginger in there and some garlic and there's nothing spicy in there. So I don't know if it's the ginger. I don't know what it is, but once you mix it all up, it gives it kind of a little kick to it. It's super delicious. It's super good. So, um, we do this probably once every other week. My husband loves this recipe. Uh, for him, if I'm trying to go low carb, then I can obviously just eat that. Maybe roast some cabbage to go with it and just put it on some cabbage. Or uh, I add rice for Scott. So um, it's a really good one. Uh, and then another one that we do is these honey sriracha oven baked salmon. Uh, and so I will link the the recipe for whoever wants it, obviously for the podcast, there are some things in here that I will say to change. So it calls for a vegetable oil, one tablespoon of it. Obviously I either use avocado oil or olive oil. And then for soy sauce, if you can't do soy sauce, there's this really cool no soy soy sauce. I don't know if you guys have seen it, heard of it. Anyways, Me I knows. use that. 
It's not coconut aminos. No, it's like made with mushrooms and something else. All the ingredients are organic. I'll share it. But anyways. So Carla just discovered aminos a couple couple months ago. So I, I remember yeah, that. True. <laughs> like, have you guys heard of coconut aminos? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kyle. Yes, we have. Anyway, so I would just add coconut aminos or that no soy soy sauce to it if um, if you're looking to avoid your soy. But yeah, it's a pound of boneless salmon and some cilantro. And again, honey and sriracha can't go wrong. And then the last one I'll share is uh, speaking of red meat or lack thereof, we do these Thai turkey burgers and they make quite a few patties too. Um, But in the burgers are like shredded carrots and um, I think there's shredded zucchini in here. I forget what it is in here. I'm trying to scroll down to see the actual recipe. But anyways, there is um, a lot of vegetables in here too. So, uh, and then you've got like a veggie slaw on top as well too, um, which is super good. And there, uh, it's also Whole30 AIP. So you can make it with peanut butter if you want to give it that actual tightness. But I use it with almond butter and it's so good. The um, almond butter sauce that you put on top of the burger and you could just wrap it in some lettuce and yeah, that's a couple recipes. So the one I was going to share has bacon in it. So <laughs> I didn't think that would be appropriate. So not you can get good quality one. bacon. But yeah, it, it's possible. Possible. It, it comes from the one I will share. Actually the other one I was going to share is in this one too. The cook once eat all week cookbook that I heard about from Ashley. And actually the recipe I'm going to share is one that Ashley made when we went to (laughs) visit them in Florida. And it's the Mexican chicken and corn street tacos. Absolutely fantastic. We've had them once a week ever since we had them at Ashley's house. They're unbelievable. Um, And they have kale in them. Who knew? Who knew? Also, by the way, the coconut aminos thing, there's a lot of things that I've learned about just from having this book. Okay. Had never heard of coconut aminos before this book told us to use them in a recipe. I was like, what is that? And that's (laughs) happened multiple times with different things. So whatever. Okay. Anyway, this is, if you get the cookbook, this is on page 132 because I don't have a link to the recipe. So just go by the cookbook and go to page 132. And so it's a sliced kale and there's a chipotle lime dressing, which is just lime juice, avocado oil mayonnaise and chipotle chili seasoning and then you have um, some butter and some three cups of cubed baked chicken and then some corn and some more lime juice salt chili powder garlic powder and paprika and then tortillas you choose which size we like the small ones (laughs) because that's that makes them street though yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so uh, well, it says 12 miniature corn tortillas or eight regular size corn tortillas. So you pick. But anyway, very, very excellent. Very good stuff. I typically don't have the patience for any tacos or anything made individually. So anything that's individual, I pretty much just dump it in a bowl and mix it up and then just shovel it. So we do like taco bowls or even like burgers. We'll just do a burger bowl. Wait a minute. I'm not. <laughs> a burger bowl? If, unless like where we went, Jared, Marty B's, unless somebody's like wrapping it for me, then I'm not, I'm not wrapping my own dang burger. Unless. Well, what's funny is you could, oh my gosh. The, the taco one is the one that gets me because if you make a taco bowl with all the stuff in it, all you need is a spoon to scoop it out and then put it in the tortilla. Or I just get the spoon, spoon it into my mouth. That is or one scoop. step has been eliminated. You're right. Or <laughs> one or, very tiny inconsequential step has or been eliminated. Hack everything you would put in your taco, put in a bowl, and then scoop it with a tortilla chip. Taco done. Taco if you bites. like crunchy tacos, what about are there soft <laughs> chips? Well, you can. I mean, if you want to, if you want to use soft tacos to s- scoop with, sure, you can do whatever you want. Or you could get chips and like get them wet, and they'll get real like soft. Deconstructed crunchy tacos so or you could just, just eat them on a tortilla like a normal person <laughs> and not be complicated Gosh. looking out for the carbs all right let's get into the workout this week i think officially it is what the ruck and i haven't pulled up and realized it's three years old just mm-hmm. time flies when you're doing meet yourself saturdays um 
I'll brief it. Uh, so the buy-in is 60 pull-ups in which kipping is allowed, 70 hand release push-ups, 80 squats, 90 sit-ups, 100 burpees. Um, can't break it up if memory serves correct. Yeah, it's uh, one before the other. Then three-mile ruck and competitor weights, male, female, 55 or 35 pounds. Established male, female, 35, 25 pounds. Recruit male, female, 25, 15 pounds. And this one is awesome. It really is uh, one of my top, I don't know, maybe top two. So what kind of tips do you guys have? I would say get through the buy-in really quickly. Yes, as fast don't as take, you can. Don't take your time with it because it's yes. just torture. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the same. I think it's the same one, the same advice I gave last time. Just get through it really quick because. Well, some people it, might think, hey, you just, save yourself for the ruck where you have a little bit more energy, right? It's just walking with a backpack. Like it doesn't take a lot of energy. <laughs> like the buy-in takes a lot of energy. Walking with a backpack does not take a lot of energy. You just oversimplify things. I beg to differ. The <laughs> ruck sucks. <laughs> don't, don't, don't church up your walking with a backpack and call it a ruck. It's, a, it's gonna, walking with a backpack. Let's start putting that in a team builder. It's not a ruck. We're doing walking with backpacks for 20 minutes today. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> right, so Kyle is do the buy-in fast. What else do you guys have? I think I said last time for the ruck. Um, I kind of shuffle, shuffle, run, then walk. I try to run bouts, so fart lick as we have talked about before. Um, that's my suggestion for the ruck. But uh, for the buy-in, yeah, there's a you just got to get through it, uh, and then. That's the fun part. I like the buy-in. It's the ruck that I don't like on this one. I don't know why. It's the three miles, man. Just, I know it's not that long. We've done 50 minutes of rucking and I've done longer than three miles. But anyways, it's just after the buy-in. I think it's the 100 burpees. That's what it is. I mean, your heart rate is just spiked. It doesn't matter. And then for the burpees, like try not to break them up too much. I don't break up the burpees. I just actually slow my pace down and make sure that I just get through the burpees. Um, cause if I stop, <laughs> I just know that I would stop for a long time before I'd get back down. But yeah, that would be my advice. I, I can't not have a plan when it comes to burpees. So I would always, <laughs> I always do mine in tens. I'll do mine 10 real quick and then take a couple seconds to break, but you know, it's too always. ambiguous just to leave a big number of burpees out there. <laughs> yeah, no, if I'm much like, Oh cool. Only 74 more to go. No, no, thanks. Um, I'm just gonna say warm up really, really good, especially your lower body. Because you got the squats, even the burpees will will work your hips some, and then the ruck is going to be murder on your calves, your hips as well. So really, really get limber on those. Because if you start to tighten up, then it's it's going to be no no boy now. I'm going to try and give some different advice than previous. Um, so here here it is. This is how I'm going to attack it myself when I do this. Uh, in the programming. So I'm going to encourage other people to do the same. The 60 pull-ups, 70 hand release push-ups, 80 squats, 90 sit-ups, game that however you want. Meaning if you got to break them up, break them up, you, whatever, like Joe was saying, 10 at a time, however you need to get those done, do it, uh, recover in between if you need to. Um, so I'm not saying go as fast as you can, but then what I am saying is I want you to set a 100 burpees for time PR once you get to the burpees because the 60, 70, 80, 90 don't actually take that long. 90 sit-ups can be a little bit time consuming, but the burpees is where you're going to eat up a bunch of time. So I want you to go in with a PR mindset and be relatively fresh. So if you don't need to push it on the 60, 70, 80, and 90, I want you to go for just an absolute PR on the burpees as fast as you possibly can. And then don't rest on after 100. You get up from 100, you put the backpack on. You start walking. You can recover during this easy thing called walking with a backpack. It's rest then, time. <laughs> dude, we might need to put a little bit more weight in your bag. <laughs> yeah, it was or, like four mile rest. Or have you walk a little bit faster because just my notebook just, and some pens in here. <laughs> I really, I really like rucking. So I've it's, never it's rucked and been like, oh, this is easy. Um, you're definitely going too light. How much are you putting in the bag? I'm not going too light. 
<laughs> How dare you say such a thing? <laughs> Have you done the fifty-five? That's 55? offensive. Huh? Have you done the fifty-five? Yeah. All right. That's what I did last time. All right. Well, now we're just gonna have to like figure out how you can like run a little faster or something. Fun fact: canned goods can only fill up your backpack to about thirty to thirty-five pounds. <laughs> Fun fact. Yeah, hammers can add another fifteen to twenty pounds. Don't though. put kettlebells in your backpack. Another don't fun put fact. kettlebells. No, nope. kettlebells bad idea. All right, I guess we can wrap it up. We set some PRs today, or I guess it's a benchmark for a podcast crash. I'm sure we'll have more in the in the future. But we have a Last lot of things. one in the U.S. for me. Oh yeah, I can't wait for more updates from Joe. It's for me to finally leave for good. Compl- complaining about the heat for at least like six weeks. Ugh. Uh, for every update i got nothing except for it's hot as hell and i'm mad about it (laughs) Um, it. (laughs) okay uh so we we do have a lot of things coming up and that's how i'll kind of you know exit this podcast i mentioned them all at the beginning i'll mention them all at the end too so we're in deload week we're going into the new fit week i would love to have uh selfishly a lot of data points with the new fit week because we typically, and you'll hear more about this in the next podcast, but I, I typically pull them and also have uh, coaching um, members uh, test things out. Like uh, we did. Um, well, I don't want to reveal any of them. We we've tested some of these things out. Um, but I love the biggest part is having the community test them. Uh, so getting everyone involved in fit week that happens after this deload week uh, then we have the new cycle 28 September, new cycle webinar on the 17th of September. We have the fuels course kicking up, kicking off the 28th as well. So there are just a lot of things going on um, because we are truly invested in making this the best program that we're capable of and the best fitness programming that you can find on the internet. So for those of you who are a member of Garage Gym Athlete, Thank you so much for being a member. I can't wait for you to see the new uh, standards, test them out, see what you think, give feedback, all that great stuff. If you're not a part of the community yet, go to garagegymathlete.com, sign up for a 14-day trial, and get indoctrinated to everything we're doing right now. We do monopolize your training. We want to own every piece of it. And some people see that as a negative. I see that as a positive because we want our athletes to stick around and see results for a decade or longer. So get indoctrinated, just buy in, Quit sitting on the fence. You suck at programming for yourself. Just put an end to it. So here it is. And now is the time. Join Garage Gym Athlete. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. Thanks for listening.